Hey guys, what's up, Pixel Saint? In today's video, we're going over a new tier list for Evil Dead the game. Now, we have Ruby included in this now. Uh, I haven't done a tier list in a long time. I think the last time I did one was when Blacksmith came out back in Halloween. And, you know, things have changed a little bit. Uh, you know, I've played a lot more of the characters as well. So, I kind of get a better understanding of where they belong in a tier list video. And, of course, if you like the video, hit that like button and hit the sub button if you're new to the channel. And let's begin. So, the first one is Amanda. So, Amanda, uh, for me, is going in D tier. I'm sorry, but Amanda is just a terrible like designed character if you look at her kit of course she is specced around using uh, last chance pretty much uh, with a blunderbuss that is the generic base that you are going to use on amanda you can't really diverse any builds with her at all you can try and do some nine mil pistol builds but honestly i just don't think she's that worth it as a character and not only that but she's only got one cosmetic as well so yeah she belongs in d tier for me um like i said she's based around the nine mil pistol you're starting with the nine mil pistol with her and um, the only good thing for her like i said is probably her infinite ammo ability Again, it is a strong ability, but it's better used with a blunderbuss. And, you know, with the rest of her kit basically designed around using a 9mm pistol, it's kind of crap to kind of say that this character belongs any higher and of course people can go and whinge at me and say you know i get a hundred thousand damage games with amanda or something like that whilst that's true i can do that myself as well i still believe with the way the character is designed and her kit that she could be better she has so much more potential and she could potentially be an s tier character if they decided to rework her and at least maybe buff her up a little bit as well but anyways uh we're going to continue so the next one is david so david is going to go straight into c tier for me hi c tier I've played a little bit more of David. I've actually just done an ultimate guide for David as well. Uh, so spend a little bit of time with this character. He's actually really fun to play. Unfortunately, you know, with his abilities, I really like his damage reduction as a ability as well. But he got, of course, he has a nail gun mastery, which is just terrible. Uh, the nail gun mastery just doesn't work for me at all. Uh, the beacon of hope, again, is a nice ability too, but again it takes a long time to master and i think you know average players aren't really gonna master this character very well but you know looking at his kit he's not a terrible support character but i just think compared to all the other support characters and that's how i sort of do these tier lists you know i look at the other characters that are in that class and i think you know uh, david doesn't perform as well as a couple of others in his class so i think he belongs in c tier there uh, Mia, Mia is decent. She does high damage. Um, I'm going to put her straight into B tier. Uh, you know, using a lumberjack axe on her. Unfortunately, you look at her kit. She's kind of based around using the machete with the, uh, the weapon mastery there. But if you ignore that, she actually has some nice perks like the heavy hitter one uh, where she can hit heavy damage and get some bleed back on that. And obviously uh, buffing up her damage even more when her fear levels are high as well. Uh, so I think she's a nice character. I think she's a decent warrior. So I think she belongs in B tier right there. Uh, so Hunter Ash where's the next one so hunter ash i believe uh for me i think he goes straight into st i think he's a really really strong character you know the exorcism ability having a really strong weapon mastery around the double barrel and like all of his kit and his perks will always work throughout the entire game as well you know finding chess obviously exorcism weapon mastery on the double barrel all that good stuff and i think once you get him prestiged as well he's even more powerful and he's a really really strong character and of course, he's got some nice skins too, so I think he belongs in S tier. <laughs> uh, Ed Getley, Ed Getley for me is probably B tier. Uh, I don't know, I can never get away with Ed. Obviously, he has like the crossbow mastery again that's been nerfed into the ground for 5%. And, you know, he is a hunter character, so you think hunters, you know, uh, they got a lot of dodging, but, you know, you can't even dodge traps these days. Of course, Ed can cancel traps, but he's also just had a nerf to him where he can't disable demon traps that have been placed already. He can only disable the ones that haven't been placed yet. So, uh, unfortunately for me, that's brought him down a level as well. And so, I think he belongs in B tier. Just because of the RNG kind of focus on the character. Where he can get better pink fur crates. And he can get better weapons for the uh, for the team as well. So, I think he belongs B tier. And the same goes for Kelly. I think Kelly's going straight into B tier. I've been spending a lot, a lot more time playing Kelly. And she's a really fun character. I just feel like she needs something a little bit more to put her higher up in tier. Of course, she has nice bleed damage. And she is a hybrid between Warrior and Hunter. So that's, you think, you know, she'd be a decent character with that. Um, She does fall short, I think, with the Meat Hammer Mastery. Although this did get a nice buff. And it's actually really nice to use the Meat Hammer. Uh, I think <laughs> for terms of being a Hunter, she probably deserved a better Weapon Mastery there. And it's under understandable why she got the meat hammer mastery of course but uh, she is nice to spam some finishes spam an iframe so that we don't have to burn through your ammo so much but you know for the damage output potential there she does have it uh 
again though i think she just belongs in b tier roughly around the same as ed and mia and of course we're going to be on to annie so annie i'm going to put an a tier annie i'm surprised hasn't been nerfed yet uh, the balance bar damage that she does is insane with prestige and stuff like that um and again range i never used to be an annie fan and i still don't play annie that much but even if i do i still feel like i'm a real headache for demon players uh but for me belongs in a tier uh, it's probably a nice sweet spot for her and, and and to be honest i think she does deserve a little bit of a nerf because uh running the meta team of like annie and ed and stuff um can be a real headache for, against demon players too Okay, so we're moving on to the next one, El Jefe. El Jefe is one of the most played characters I have in my Evil Dead career, to be honest. Um, I've spent so much time on him. I nearly have him Prestige 5 as well. And I really, really like this character. Uh, but I am going to put him in A tier below Annie. He is a really strong choice. Uh, don't get me wrong, you know, the fear resistance is really nice there. The damage buff that he gives is nice. And to be honest, his active ability isn't really as bad as people make it out to be. Uh, you can actually pull some nice players off of that ability. And once you get that Prestige, you know you are hitting some and balance bar is pretty fast as well so uh, it actually goes to like a 25 second cooldown or something and does some decent amount of balance bar damage so uh, he can be helpful against possessed units too and of course you know he's that type of character that has the the play style of being like oh I, I need to do something playing this character which is you can either focus on trying to do dismemberment which I don't recommend but you can actually focus on doing a lot of finishes on AI units which is going to buff the team up as well so I think that's a really nice uh, method and a really nice character to play just because you have a purpose of playing him and the same goes for Lord Arthur Lord Arthur is going to go in A tier below El Hefe and Annie. I think Lord Arthur is not as good as the other two, primarily because he just focuses on melee damage. Um, but, you know, if you get this guy prestige and level up, he can be pretty powerful too. But you know, the fact is, he is just focused on melee damage, so he does belong roughly in A tier for me. And he does have a little bit of fear uh, resistance as well, or fear reduction in his kit. And it's not a terrible choice as well. Okay, so the next character is Evil Dead 1 Ash. I've spent a little bit more time with him as well. Uh, so for me, I'm going to put him A tier. I'd probably put him S tier because he is a very strong support. I'm actually going to put him above Annie because I think he's better than Annie. Uh, he just has a really high skill ceiling, so it takes a long time to master this character but once you get good with him he's really really powerful as a support um you know i would put him in s here i try to fall back on what average players would do with this character you know would average players be good with support ash i don't think they would because you know they won't be timing their dodges right you know they'll be wasting shams in some scenarios they won't be using his fear properly and they won't be using his headshot and mark target stuff properly as well uh but for me you know when i play him i'm pretty good with him i spent a lot of time on this character as well uh, uh, so for me, I, I think he belongs in A tier, but like I said, he's very hard to master for people. And this is why we're going to fall into Cheryl here and putting her in S tier again. Uh, I know Cheryl just had a little nerf of her fear, but she's just a healing machine, to be honest. Like, you know, Cheryl doesn't take a long time to master. You could probably pick up Cheryl straight away when you're new to the game and you just like drink colas for fun. Like that is Cheryl. And, you know, it's very actually like really strong and you can be really good with Cheryl as well. You know, mastering this character again can be a real headache for the demon. Uh, she is slightly performed at higher levels by Evil Dead 1 Ash. Well, I say slightly, she gets massively outperformed by Evil Dead 1 Ash in higher levels because Evil Dead 1 Ash is obviously hitting targets. He's also healing the team and the pro process of that and it just makes him a much more viable and better character to go for in team comms but you know it's not saying that cheryl's terrible as i said she's just a healing machine she's really powerful uh drinking shamps and stuff and obviously throwing out her ability for healing the team as well so uh you may disagree with me putting her above uh, evil dead one ash but just so you know it's because of the way average players play the game not how i play the game you know if i played the game most of these people would be a lot higher than what they are but again we're trying to factor in what other people do and what their kit is designed around so next one is pablo pablo uh, for me is just going to be a bit lower than david uh, pablo is really nice you know throwing out amulets for warriors he's kind of a situational based character uh, <laughs> you know he's not going to do well if he has a bunch of hunters on his team basically uh, you know a lot of people prefer playing hunters these days uh, over warriors and you know you don't see many warriors around but you know if you have pablo with warrior like henry the red that's a really nice combination there uh, but you look at his kit some things like where you take the amulet and it hides the the other teammate like for like eight seconds it's kind of like bad perks and 
He's not really a character that takes much to master even. Even if you do master this character, you know, he's not going to be a massive, massive headache for demon players most of the time. Um, but he is he's pretty average, so, you know, C tier for me, I think that's where he belongs. And I just think David offers a little bit more in his kit than what Pablo offers. So that's why we have him there. And Army Darkness Astra in the S tier for me. This guy has never left S tier on my tier list. Um, you know, I have this guy Prestige 5. The stuff you can do and pull off with this dude is absolutely insane. Um, you know, most of the time when I'm playing him, I feel pretty much unkillable. You know, I just spamming finishes, regenerating my health that way having his wise man potion the only downside to him is the chainsaw mastery i'm not a huge fan of that i wish he did get a different perk other than weapon mastery to be honest that goes for most characters in this in this game you know when they have weapon mastery perks i tend to just try and totally ignore that weapon mastery the only weapon mastery i kind of like in this game is the double barrel one and the load off a sword one most of the rest of them are just pretty bad and yeah so like i said army of darkness ash belongs in s tier any i think any uh a warrior type of tank person that can regen their own health is always going to be stuck in s tier it's not even draining resources for the team there you know spamming finishes doing a lot of damage to possess units as well this dude is just an absolutely insane tank and he's really good and the same goes for henry the red i'm going to put him in s tier just a little bit lower than army of darkness ash i have been spending again a little bit more time playing henry instead of my main characters like i normally play and you know the stuff you can pull off with henry is really good you know he's got them clutch, clutch revive situations where you, you know you can trigger his ability and you know you can get people up he's also got a massive health bar and a massive shield bar to take down as well so he can take a lot of damage for the team he's also a really strong player if you learn how to body block correctly and to take protection hits for your team as well so uh, for me he belongs in s tier of course you know i don't know why everyone gets gets this crazy idea in their head that henry's an insane balance bar breaker I mean, you know, you can put balance bar perks on, but he's not going to break balance bars faster than Army of Darkness, Ash, with running the same perks. You know, it's just, it's it's all going to be the same. And it just makes no sense why people just think, oh, Henry the Red's a really good balance bar dealer. It's It doesn't work like that at all. It's pretty weird why people get that mentality in their head but again like i said he belongs in s tier definitely okay so we come on to the last three here we got scotty next scotty for me is going to go in b tier higher than me you know lumberjack axe mastery when you got a mastery on the best weapon in the game you know you're instantly going to be good there but unfortunately he falls short with the rest of his his other abilities they kind of let him down a little bit um so when you're specking the character around just one weapon again it kind of brings him down a bit but you know his active ability is a bit decent uh you know obviously hitting heavies and you know pushing the deadites away with that and doing a, what was it? i think it was like 13 percent extra damage or something uh to units around that uh so you know btf for me i think he's really good he does have high damage potential numbers so he is a really good uh, solid character um but, you know, compared to the other two warriors, I don't think these two ever will come close to Army of Darkness, Ash, and Henry, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, so we're going to look at Blacksmith. Blacksmith, for me, is going to go C tier. And I know a few people who will probably hate me for doing this. But, yeah, I mean, Blacksmith's a nice warrior. Don't get me wrong. However, he's heavily reliant on the Shemps as well. You know, if he had, doesn't have Shemps, this guy is not really going to be much use for the team. And, you know, he can use amulets. You know, he has the chance to have amulets won't break. But again, it's an RNG-based character, and it's nothing amazing, to be honest. Um, at the end of the day, you know, if you pick up a Blacksmith, you're not going to have a terrible game with him. Um, you know, he's probably just on the same level as Pablo, if I'm being honest. And he is a fun character. Like I said, I haven't spent much time playing Blacksmith. But again, average players will have fun playing him and you know he doesn't have really the highest skill ceiling you know you if even if you master this character you're not going to be game break and you're not going to be you know totally dominating the game for heals for your team competitor like cheryl or uh, evil dead one ash you know mastering blacksmith <laughs> you can be good with him but at the end of the day he's too rng based and he's not really going to be much help to the team that way and of course we're going to move on to the final one this is the one probably everyone's been waiting for which is ruby uh, ruby's just been added to the game I've spent a lot of time with her looking at her kit, looking at what she offers to the team and stuff. And for me, she is the best leader in the game and she is going straight in the S tier. And people might be thinking, why are you putting Ruby in S tier? And let me just explain real quick. If you look at her kit that she has, 
you know, she offers cooldown reduction, which is huge. Stamina reduction, again, which is huge. A damage buff, again, the 20% damage buff, absolutely massive. And the last thing she offers is damage reduction as well. So, you know, you've got cooldown reduction, stamina regeneration, damage and damage reduction, all in one, <laughs> all in one aura from this character. It's just absolutely insane. Then she really needs nerfed. But uh, like I said, she definitely belongs higher than the other leaders. And then you look at her self-healing too, you know, collecting souls um you know you can actually heal herself and she can heal the team as well not only that but she's very difficult to possess too uh so again it's, you know <laughs> it's kind of crazy how they made her like that but it is ruby at the end of the day you can kind of see her being powerful in the game um but compared to the other the other leaders don't come close to what she offers in the game but uh hopefully you guys enjoyed this tier list hopefully he's more or less agree with me with where these characters i know i don't really do many tier list videos i think they're a bit controversial when i do them so many people disagree with me and they decide to do some like negative comments to me saying oh your opinion shit it's like well that's my opinion at the end of the day if you don't like it go do your own tier list you know uh, but yeah i have upgraded my tier list on the tier list maker i know a lot of people like to use my tier list on here so i finally got around to upgrading that there for you guys and and thank you guys so much for watching hit that like button leave me a comment down below let me know what you guys think of the tier list where you would personally put people in as well i'd like to see everyone else's uh, opinions on that and thank you guys so much for watching if you are new to the channel i do stream this game monday to thursday i do a lot of evil dead content on my channel i do ultimate guides best builds for each survivor as well and maybe we'll even branch out with doing some demon content eventually <laughs> uh, but thank you guys so much for watching i've been pixels you my awesome viewers i'll catch you guys in the next one